Welcome to Coffee with the Risk Manager, where we share a cup of coffee with colleagues and discuss all things risk management and higher education. With me today is Courtney Curtis, AVP of Risk Management and Resilience at University of Chicago and current president of Ermia. Uh, and today we're gonna to be chatting about ways to embed diversity, equity, and inclusion work into your risk management program. So Courtney, tell me a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Before I tell you a little bit about myself, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this important series, especially on a topic as important as diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so I am the risk manager for the University of Chicago, also leading our resilience planning efforts. Uh, but my background also includes a little bit of brokerage side. So I offer a unique perspective. And then, of course, uh, as president of Ermia, I'm leading our strategic goal efforts on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, as a risk manager, I certainly have made it an important part of our business procurement processes to engage with minority and women-owned businesses as, as part of those efforts. Um, but this really stems from some of my own personal experience as a professional, too, because uh, I've often found myself to be the only woman, only person of color, or the youngest in many of my professional settings, sometimes the combination of all three of them. Um, and so it's important to me that I find ways to bring others along as I think about having a young daughter or having many sisters and others who may look up to me, I need to make sure that they too see that representation in any of their professional settings that they're in. Yeah, and I know, again, I know we've talked about this before, I share that sentiment with you, our daughters are the same age, um, so I too share your passion um, for this work. So for the first time in Ermia's history, we have DEI embedded into our strategic plan. That's mm -hmm. exciting and awesome. And I know we're just getting started on this work, but I think I speak on behalf of a lot of Ermians that the change is visible and it's tangible even in the short time we've been doing this. So thank you for leading the efforts on that. Um, and then as far as embedding DEI work into your risk management program. How do you do that? How do you approach that? I think a lot of risk managers are struggling with this right now. So give us some examples of what you do. Absolutely, I will. First, we have to be accountable and know that we have to take an active step in order to embed DE and I. Similar to how we can't be the only person on our campus you know, enforcing risk management efforts, this too is incumbent on everyone to have a role in uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. So it's more than just your hiring pipeline that you create. It's looking at the vendors who you engage with and how to create more diversity there. It's uh, it's about educating yourself, um, appreciating different unconscious biases that we may have, um, finding opportunities to engage in dialogue and discourse around difficult conversations that we may have, reviewing policies and procedures that may have uh, negatively impacted other uh, groups of people as well, um, including diversity, equity, and inclusion as part of your ERM efforts is really important to finding ways to actively make a change. And when doing so, thinking about the impact that that then has on your community and all of your stakeholders um, is going to be key too. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, I want to hang on the MWEB E piece for one moment, um, because since I've transitioned over to the broker side, this is something that we've seen and a, which appears to be a concerted effort to allocate revenue dollars, um, budgetary dollars towards an investment in minority and women owned businesses. So one of the questions I get, which I really appreciate getting because it speaks to that intentionality and active participation is how much should I be investing in MWBEs? How much is enough to make a meaningful impact on this sector? Um, and you know, I like looking at local municipalities and local states and what their procurement guidelines are, but what I found is there's a lot of states that don't have these yet, right? Now there's a lot of things that play into that number, right? There's a lot of decisions that need to be made and that's not an easy transition to take. But looking at that figure, it really gives us a sense of where we're headed. And when we keep actively moving this initiative forward, this is where we're going to end up. And, and this is how it should be. Um, so I also want to pick your brain on teams. Mm -hmm. So we have commiserated in the past about, um, you know, team structure. We've, we've chatted about this at length. How do we move away from tokenizing minority team members um, and not just putting a person in the room because of their identity. 
um, but actually really leveraging the diverse perspective that they can offer. So how have you tackled this? Absolutely. So it's it's important to realize that this is not a check the box exercise. Um, not only are you looking for the value that that diverse member of your team brings, you should be doing that for everyone. But in particular for that person, can they add value? Do they have the opportunity to engage in the dialogue and the conversations, taking on an active role with that team? Um, are they just being presented for the RFP exercise or are they gonna have ongoing engagement with that client with real meaningful responsibility? Mm -hmm. You really have to take a step back and look at that for every person, but certainly that to, to so it's not looking or appearing that we're just checking the box to, to make this uh, appearance of having uh, someone with a diverse background. And when you look at your teams, that's important, but you should look at your organization as a whole. Uh, I think that as our world becomes increasingly diverse, our teams and everything we should do should really reflect the same. Uh, and we will be better for having that diverse perspective and representing our community around us through the teams that we have. Yeah, that's great. Um, so the next question I have for you is a, a twofer. So try to follow me on this one. Uh, you mentioned at the, in the opening of this, that you take a hard look at policies and procedures and consider the impact. Are there any that you've found that, uh, any examples you can share of ways that you've found bias in your review? Uh, and then the second piece of that question is, um, the communities we serve. So you mentioned being intentional about the communities we serve and the impact of decisions we make and how they affect communities. Can you speak to both those pieces? Absolutely. On the first, when it comes to policies and procedures, I think we all have to realize that whether you intentionally meant to cause harm or not, sometimes our policies adversely impact a group or a person. And we really should evaluate those. So is it necessary to have a college degree for certain positions that we have on campus? Is it necessary for us to advance candidates for a certain role with their name being shown? Is it necessary when we have our auto policies and risk management details related to that, that we have a certain number of tickets you can have? If in our area, there may be uh, certain things that you look at even statistically that adversely impact one area. So as hard as that is, those evaluations need to happen in order to create the opportunity and provide equitable situations for all. On the community piece, I think we have to really be mindful of the decisions and the policies we make and how it impacts the community around us. So using COVID for an example, as we sh shut down our operations on campus and students and employees were staying at home, the ecosystem around us was impacted. How do we still you know, help the community around us engage and thrive uh, after these events happen? And that's just one small example of that. Yeah, that's great. So um, one of the things that uh, I've kind of found as a passion in my role, and I've noticed you do the same, is to elevate those underrepresented voices. And as a, a young woman who's a veteran, um, I've benefited from diversity work throughout my career. And now I'm finding myself in a position with my influence to start elevating some of these voices, as you are as well. Um, so that's really exciting to start to give back and kind of pick up those that, you know, and, and um, pay back some of the benefits that we've, we've seen. Um, so I could talk to you all day about this, Courtney, um, but thank you for being on this episode of Coffee with the Risk Major. Thank Cheers. you for having me. Cheers.